This is a tutorial showing you how to install the Windows Management Framework version 5, which gives you access to PowerShell version 5 and the ability to use the Windows PowerShell Gallery. So to begin, I've downloaded the installer for Windows 8.1 and Windows Server 2012 R2. That's why it has a kind of funky name there. You can download that by Googling the Windows Management Framework, or WMF5, and I'll provide a link as well. So just open that up. It'll ask you if you want to install KB3134758, and you should say yes. And that's pretty much it. It's going to ask you a few more questions to accept the ability to install it, and then you watch progress bars, which is always fun. Once you're finished, restart the computer, and we'll pick back up from there. The first thing I want to do is run PowerShell as an administrator so we can start installing packages from the PowerShell gallery. So I'm going to right click the PowerShell item there, run as administrator, yes I accept the fact that I want to do that, and we're good to go. Now let's say you wanted to find the rubric module. So you do a find module, then name, rubric, and it's going to go and find any module that matches that specific name, and there's only one so it should be pretty easy. And there it is. The latest version in this particular recording is 1.0.2, and it shows that it's available in the PowerShell gallery. That's the repository that it would connect to. You can also find this particular module in all the available versions. So I can do, there we go, all versions. And it's going to show the 1.01 and 1.02 release. You have the power to install the latest one or a specific version. So let me show you how to install a specific version first. The command is install module with a name of rubric, and then a required version of 1.0.1.0. I'll also go ahead, go ahead and turn on verbose logging so you can see what's going on. So it's using NuGet to connect to the PowerShell gallery. That's that powershellgallery.com slash API slash v2. It's found it, and it says specifically that it's performing the operation on version 1.0.1. .1. And now it's letting you know hey, this is untrusted because we haven't actually set a trust for this particular repository. Are you sure you want to proceed? I'll say yes, and the module will be installed. And there we go. 1.0.1 .1 is now installed, and we can verify that by doing a git module followed by a list available and the name rubric. And there it comes up with 1.0.1. .1. Now the reason I did this is to show you how to also update your installed modules. So I can just do update module, no arguments required, and it'll comb through any installations handled by the system and let you know that there's an update required. So I'll go ahead and say, yeah, trust everybody for this particular upgrade and update my rubric module. Now if I up arrow a few times, go back to my list available, we can see that we have the 1.01 and superseded by the 1.02. You could also go ahead and remove the 1.01 if necessary. So I can do uninstall module name rubric required version 1.0.1 and it'll nuke it. And we can see that just 1.0.2 is now installed. So what can I do with this module? Well, the first thing you want to do is connect to the rubric cluster. So I'll do connect rubric doesn't require any arguments or parameters, and you can get started. The first thing it needs is the server IP or the cluster IP, so I'll put in that for my lab. And then because I didn't pass a parameter of the username and secure password or a credential object, it's gone ahead and prompted me for credentials. So I'll put in my Active Directory account, hit OK, and if you do everything right, you'll get a you are now connected to the rubric API prompt. From there, you can pull out token information by going to the rubric connection object, and that's actually a hash table of key value pairs. However, that's not required because at this point, you can start executing commands against the rubric cluster. So let's take a look at any of the SLAs that are created within the system. I'll just do a git rubric SLA, no arguments required, and a JSON return of all the contents appears on my screen. And that shows that I have three SLA domains created, bronze, silver, and gold, those are the defaults, as well as how many virtual machines, backups, the UI color, the retention values, all of that jazz is put right there. And that's actually a set of objects that are being displayed as string or text information on the screen. I could also save this as some kind of variable. So let me call this, I'll up arrow and do 
test equals that. And there we go. The same information is now held within a variable called test. So I can actually query the test variable and say, give me the first SLA held in your array. So test, and we'll do a bracket zero. Just returns the first one, because zero is number one in computer language, or the second one, or the third, etc. cetera. Uh, or I can get even more details. I can go into this second one that's gold and ask it for the number of VMs, and it returns information. Really, the world is your oyster at this point. If you can think it, you can create it, because the entire RESTful API is available to you by way of the PowerShell framework. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on how to install the Windows Management Framework version 5, getting started with the PowerShell gallery, and how to install, connect, and run a few commands against Rubrik with our PowerShell module.